Hi everyone, in this uh, video we will simulate the motion of a pendulum in Excel. I have a drawing of a pendulum. Uh, there are two states, one is the resting state and another is at angle theta from the resting state. At this angle, the pendulum will be at height h and because of that it will have a potential energy. When we release the pendulum, the potential energy will convert to kinetic energy and thereby the pendulum will acquire some motion. And uh, to do this uh, simulation, we need first uh, two numbers. One is the length. And let's say the length is uh, around 70 meters. And uh, then the mass. The mass of uh, the pendulum is uh, suppose 10 kgs. Now we can calculate uh, a few numbers here. So let's say first the theta uh, is equal to 70. So if we have theta to be 70, we can calculate L minus H. So L minus H will be equal to, we have to assume, look at the dotted line, we have to assume this to be a right angle triangle. And from that, we can say that L minus H will be equal to cos. And now we have to say radians. Cos of theta. So theta is uh, I 10 multiply with length and we can put a dollar sign here so we are putting a dollar sign because we don't want the reference to the length change when we move this uh, formula somewhere else so now you can say it's 23.94 if I change the theta to say 25 and you can see that the L minus H is increasing. That means our formula is correct. So if I go to 0, uh, L minus H is 70. So this makes sense. So let's go back and make it 70. Now this is the L minus H. Now H can be calculated as length minus L minus H. So I put a dollar sign again to fix the reference. Now this is the height. Now we have the height, so potential energy can be calculated as height into length into mass into 9.8. And this is a J, so we will again put a dollar sign here, so the reference will not change. So potential energy is basically MGH. So we have mass, we have H, and we have gravity. So this is the potential energy. Now kinetic energy at this stage is zero. So we know that because uh, the pendulum is not moving, we are holding it at this uh, point. And uh, if we calculate the velocity, we know that potential energy and uh, the kinetic energy and the velocity are related as half mv square. So we can multiply the potential kinetic energy with the 2 divided by mass. and take the square root of the whole thing. So that will give me the velocity. And because the potential energy or the kinetic energy is zero, so velocity is also zero. Now let's say uh, we go from 70 to 60. So I'll say 70 minus uh, 10, so this is 60. So you can see that the length now L minus H is now higher. And because L minus H is higher, height will be less. So the pendulum, lost some height and because it lost some height it will also lose some potential energy and then how the kinetic energy will change the kinetic energy will be equal to difference between what the potential energy was at the 70 minus what the potential energy was at 60 and i will again put a dollar sign here because when i do further calculation i always want my reference to be this initially what I had as kinetic energy because this was the potential energy we had in the start. So I'll say this and then you can see the velocity is this. So now we have some velocity because the pendulum lost some potential energy that converted to kinetic energy. So now if you do the same calculations again and again, you can see that eventually at theta zero, so I'll, I'll, I'll remove this first. So you can see that at theta zero, the whole potential energy converted to the kinetic energy. So these numbers are same. If, if you look at these numbers, these are same. 
and the velocity is maximum at this point now if we go further you will see that uh, we are so let me do this and now this one is this one. so now you can see that again the potential energy increased and it went back to the same number we had in the beginning and uh, kinetic energy again become zero so if you look at the total energy so this is a uh, total energy so that will be equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy and now these numbers are constant so you can see that this number is not changing because we are using the conservation of energy we are not uh, putting any kind of drag because of the medium the pendulum is in so if we if we move any drag the pendulum should move uh, indefinitely from in this oscillation oscillating movement and it will go to 70 to minus 70 again and again now just to make it more clearer let's draw some graphs so if i say choose this one and say insert this is a graph and i will select this graph and change it this one to potential energy delete this one this one delete this one and call this as potential energy now this is how the potential energy graph will look like so we can drag this here as you can see now again if I copy the same thing and I paste it here I can select this graph and I can change it to the kinetic energy so this is how the kinetic energy will look like so you can see that when kinetic is maximum potential is zero when potential is zero kinetic is maximum now again I can copy this graph and I can paste one more and I can look at the velocity so now if you look at the velocity uh, although it is maximum uh, at the same point when the kinetic energy is maximum but there is a relationship velocity is now let me call this velocity so velocity is uh, per, uh, square of the velocity is proportional to the kinetic energy so there is a, a polynomial relationship and that's why um, this is uh, uh, this graph look a bit different from what uh, we have for the kinetic energy so I hope uh, this uh, video help in the next video we'll talk about how we can uh, include the drag forces into the motion of the pendulum and that will change everything and slowly uh, we will see the damping effect where the pendulum uh, will instead of going to 70 it will uh, go to the smaller angles as the drag forces will uh, try to minimize the motion of the uh, pendulum so i'll see you in the next video and i hope this video helps goodbye